Hi guys and girls, hope you're doing well today. So I've been asked by Lils to do a little piece about what I can and can't do with a stoma. My initial reaction was, I can do everything. But that's not entirely true. I have changed some of the ways that I deal with my everyday life. The first thing that comes to mind is when I'm visiting with my niece and nephew who are nine and seven. And obviously kids are boisterous and they want to sort of climb all over you and give you cuddles and things. So at first I was really, really wary of this and you probably will be if you're going to engage in any sort of rough and tumble playing with children. But sometimes I will use my Comfiz Stoma Protector and just wear that for a bit of peace of mind if I think it's going to be a bit of a rough sesh. Um, you could wear a protective waistband and you'll also just sort of get used to how it feels to have kids sort of sitting on you and you'll need to get used to that feeling and know that as long as they're not doing anything too rough your stoma is going to be okay obviously you don't want it to get knocked in any way you don't want it to get pushed in and also if you're new out of surgery you're going to have um, an open or a wound that is sort of trying to heal. So it's always something to think about, but again, time will just tell you what your limitations are in that regard. I've also had to change the way I wear a seatbelt in a car. Um, I'm quite lucky, I suppose, because I've got a nice round, soft belly and the seatbelt will just sort of ride above that. So quite a lot away above my stoma. Um, if you're slimmer, then you might want to think about using the comfy stoma protector to wear over your stoma and that way the seatbelt can go over the stoma area easier. There is also a seatbelt protector that you can buy to put onto your seatbelt and it just adds some padding I think and that way you won't be worried and really conscious of it when you're travelling around in a car. When I first got out of surgery and started venturing into the big wide world, I was really conscious of my stoma and I would just sort of walk around with my hand over the bag. And as time's gone on, I do that a lot less. Sometimes I feel like I have to do it if I'm in a bit more of a crowded situation. That can be something to think about you know you don't want people to bump into you so i guess i'm using my hand to try and protect that area another thing that i've talked about in another video is going out and using the toilet to change your bag um as i've said before i haven't done it in an ordinary lady's toilet i always use a disabled toilet um I've heard a lot of nightmare stories, to be honest, about people, particularly old elderly people that are knocking on doors, you know, they've seen you go into a disabled toilet and if you haven't got a walking stick or a wheelchair, then they're going to be thinking, what are you doing using the toilet? Are you just trying to cut queues? Um, if that's the case and someone's harassing you, if it was me, I know that I'm quite good with that sort of thing. I've got the confidence to just sort of say, hey, I've got a colostomy bag, get out of my face. Uh, not everyone's gonna be that happy to do that. So you'll sort of learn with how you wanna deal with it. And I really hope that these sort of people don't upset you. If you just wanna sort of say to them quietly, look, I've got a, a colostomy bag or an ileostomy bag and I need to use the disabled toilet, then go for it. And if you don't want to, just ignore them because they're not worth it. You know, why are they going in the disabled toilet? Because they're old? Well, everybody's got a right to use it that needs to use it. There are some things that I do steer clear of eating. Um, I think it's a lot easier with a colostomy than an ileostomy. I know that if I couldn't eat something before, I can't eat it now. Um, I will do another video about nutrition, but one thing that I have definitely been doing more of is hydrating myself. So drinking a lot more clear fluids because the last thing you want as an ostomate is to become constipated. It just makes everything that bit harder. Sleeping can be different. Um, if you have always been a stomach sleeper, that might change. 
particularly if you have got an ileostomy. With a colostomy bag, I don't think it's quite as bad. I always put a sticker on the filter of my bag when I go to sleep so that it won't compress and that way it won't do what's called pancaking. Um, I'm going to do another video about pancaking because that does happen quite a lot and there are various things you can do to stop that but sleeping is something you will be conscious of. I tend to prop a big nice soft like a feather or a down pillow underneath my stomach area and then I will sort of roll slowly onto that pillow because I do tend to like sleeping sort of on my side front sort of like this um, if you do sleep on your front you'll just devise ingenious ways of dealing with that you'll use pillows to prop yourself up you can make sort of a little indentation in a feather pillow which is why I tend to use a feather pillow or you could maybe use two pillows either side of your stoma and that will give you a sort of area that your stoma can your bag rather can sort of fit nicely into I've been out dancing with my colostomy bag and that was absolutely fine I obviously took my supplies with me and as much as I say dancing with my mobility it was more like a just a nice simple side to side motion but you know if you can dance go for it because your bag will stick and if you do have problems with sticking then there are things that you can use you can get um, wafer extenders which will go around the outside of your wafer um, two-piece systems are quite good for this because they're quick removal if you go out and you sort of want to get back out there you can change your bag quite a bit quicker than if you have a one-piece system I have said before that I've been swimming and I actually have just been away and I was lucky enough to be able to go into the pool at a really nice hotel um, I just wear cute little swim dresses because uh, that's sort of my style anyway that's what I was wearing before but it really hides a bag really well um, if I had the figure to pull off a bikini I might do that and I personally wouldn't be bothered if people are looking at me and I would welcome any questions if they wanted to know what it was I know that there are a lot of people that have had problems in swimming pools and all I can say about that is if people are going to be ignorant and not going to understand that you're not going to leak poo all over the place and you know there's not going to be a big floater in the swimming pool then let them think that that's their ignorant opinion and again if you can stand up for yourself go for it and if you don't feel the need then just carry on talk to a lifeguard hopefully they'll be a bit more uh, understanding and respectful and you know it's something it's important if you enjoyed swimming before don't let having a bag stop you because I certainly haven't I think a lot of people are worried about what clothes that they can wear once they've got their new bag I really haven't had any difference in what I can wear I guess that wearing a waistband does sort of help you feel a bit more secure if you're gonna wear some tight clothes um, if you wear loose clothes anyway then that's fine you won't have to change and I'd say don't change anyway you know as the time goes on I really hope that you'll get more and more confident and there are ways to sort of disguise having a bag you'll find what works best for you I really like peplum tops so they sort of flare out over the hip area and that hides a bag really really well I've also used a long sleeve shirt to tie around my waist and that works quite nicely gives a bit of a cookie look and it just hides it really well before I was irrigating I did really miss lying down on my stomach so sort of laying on the bed to read a book on my stomach and irrigating has allowed me to have a bag that is mainly free of any poo for you know the first day and at least a day and a half after I irrigate and that has been a really nice treat actually as a colostomy irrigation does really open that up to you there are times when you're going to be nervous about things and I get like that quite a lot with my um, anxiety that I get and so even say going to a hospital appointment I get really nervous and if that's the case just as before 
Whereas before you felt like you might need to have a poo, this time you are probably going to have a poo into your bag. So it's just something to be aware of. If you're going somewhere and, you're, and your nerves sort of kick in, just think, you know, you might get some more output than you usually would on a day-to-day -day basis. And to take the extra bags if you know that you're probably going to get nervous. My sister-in-law found it really funny when I first got a bag to talk about what would happen when I got a dicky belly and it's actually been okay. I've had a few times that I've had diarrhoea and I don't usually have that watery and output so that is something to think about if you get food poisoning or stomach flu or something um, and it wasn't as hilarious as she thought so sorry about that chick. I feel like I've probably left quite a few things out. It's hard to think of all the things that I've been limited with because I really don't feel like I have been that limited. Um, if you want to ask me about anything in particular that you think might be limiting, I can answer as best as I can and just contact me if you want to know anything else so have a lovely day toodaloo darlings and see you next time